the the dialogue and the interactions like there, there's there's a humor that the the color stop messing with the bird sorry <laughs> the cat is driving me nuts uh it, but this fine this will be a great recurring gag in the video <laughs> get out of here uh what an adorable dream why there's only one thing missing a touch of fear <laughs> That never gets old. We have such a weird relationship with fear. It's a primal instinct that makes our heart race walking in the dark, that makes us paranoid of strange sounds, and yet horror is one of the biggest things across all media. It's a genre designed to make us feel unsettled, anxious, fearful. Even as children, when we can't handle things like The Exorcist, we have diet horror like The Addams Family, Coraline, hell, anything by Tim Burton. Webtoons is brimming with horror comics that appeal to both hardcore fright seekers and casual Halloween lovers alike. Why are we so masochistic? That's rhetorical, I don't have an answer about the gray area of fear, but that's exactly where online comics artist Hollering Elk operates. She, yes, she, has made quite the name for herself in the world of webcomics. While many of her peers prefer to use more simplified styles, Elk produces highly detailed work that can take tens of hours for a single comic. And the finished products are often really funny, but they're also often, well, nightmare fuel. But not in the usual way. Unsettling, sure, but her comics are impossible to look away from. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. This is a story of a woman who deals with the strange, surreal, and fearful both in doling it out and facing it herself, but never in the way you expect. This is the story straight from the maw of the beast herself. It's the story of Hollering Elk. She started out the same way many artists did. While she was a young... Really? Huh. While she was still just a young elk calf growing up in Texas, she would draw with whatever she could get her hands on even if that meant scribbling on printer paper. And she would go on to attend the University of North Texas. I pull a lot from my, my advanced painting courses uh, back in college where I had this professor, he was like the Simon Cowell of painting professors. And that, that guy, like he was brutal, but he created this, this atmosphere of trying to help people structure their criticisms and, and being more thorough and explaining to the, to the artist, you know, what it is that they think that they could be improved upon to better the body of work as a whole or you know that versus like personal opinion while in college she started a series called the horn leg paintings in 2010. these paintings were staggering in size eight to ten feet across she said they were these large-scale traditional acrylic paintings that started those in college and they're all based on livestock and wildlife from the west texas region it kind of had this same sort of spooky mysterious lore that my comics do and there was one central figure that appeared and it was this kind of mutated humanoid elk that constantly had its jaws wide open like it was shouting into the ether. The idea was that it was one of the figures of the paintings that was just in perpetual pain, just in agony. In the story of the paintings, the researchers, uh, they coined a term for it and they called it the hollering elk. And I adopted the name for that to the persona that I have now for the comics. And so everything I do now has some kind of connection to those paintings. It's just sort of a separate era of what I did. Yep, that's where the name Hollering Out came from. An eternally in agony, screaming, tortured figure that was a mutated humanoid elk thing. Honestly, I'm not sure what else we expected. After earning her BFA in studio art and graduating, she would eventually move to New Orleans. But after working as a traditional portrait painter for 12 years and dealing with the fine arts world, well, by the time the lockdown started in 2020, she was feeling artist burnout. It's not the easiest career path to keep up with. Uh, around the pandemic in 2020, I was just churning out painting after painting. The paintings were getting nicer, that my skill was progressing. It's just the quality of them was advancing and that was all great and everything. It's just that it was mind numbing and fine art as a field is, is just, I hate the bureaucracy of it, I guess. And it's pretty limiting, you know, when you're painting for other people. It was time for a change. So she took all that higher education and adapted it into internet cartoons, webcomics. 
Her hollering elk accounts had been around since at least 2014, but she was never consistently active on them. Still, whether it was Imgur or Reddit, she would post her art from time to time with the occasional comic. I mean, does it surprise anyone that she dabbled in the eldritch abomination Garfield side of the internet? And if this is the first time you're hearing about that, oh boy do you have quite the rabbit hole to go down today. The first comic in her more familiar style was Upkeep, posted to Reddit on August 12th, 2021. And as she puts it, it hit the front page instantly. Elk realized she could do something with this. Elk's first few comics wouldn't present any imagery that was outright frightening. But the stark contrast of scrolling past 10 comics made in MS Paint and then seeing this, it was jarring, but also instantly recognizable. That's not to say comics with simpler graphics were better or worse, but damn, that comparison makes for some great content. Because nowhere could you find artists on more opposite ends of the style spectrum than Hollering Elk and Portuguese Geese. Only a couple of days after Upkeep was posted, Portuguese Geese would upload a comic called Speed Up the Process. It's a meta joke all about how drawing a simpler style can slide into an even more simpler style without sacrificing quality, and therefore being able to get done faster. It was something that Elk physically cannot bring herself to do. I had never talked to him in my life. I didn't have a repertoire with anyone on the subreddit, let alone the webcomic community. It really was that he posted this comic, the standard of, of his art and like his art style, which it's it's very basic, it's very minimal, but his writing is just phenomenal. Like he like outwitted me multiple times during that. And I so I saw the first comic where he was like, how do I come up with faster comics and stop it? I just, I saw that and I was like, wouldn't it be hilarious if I drew this over the top, really in your face, hyper detailed bullshit comic and I'm a fucking nobody at that point. And just as like a response to this random guy who is on the front page of Reddit and just see what he says. The day after that comic of me kind of looking across the room at him, he's like, I'd lower your standards, faster comics. And I look at him like, I don't, I don't know how, which is true. I take forever on everything I do. It's kind of a meme at this point. And that last panel is just like this epic dragon. The core of the joke was just that I just went so overboard on this incredibly dumb premise of kind of calling out this other artist for just having a totally separate style for me, like an apples and oranges. I didn't know how he was going to respond. I wrote a comment on the thing saying, hey, I actually, I love your stuff. I'm just this random person who draws these really elaborate things on occasion. And I didn't know if I was going to continue with that art with him, but he ended up responding with something and it just kept going for a week and it got more and more surreal and zany and just like, he really like, that's one of the most challenging things I've ever done, because like he kept coming back with something even smarter, and that that's his forte. He's just a really witty guy, and so I, I'd always have to counter with something that was elaborately drawn, but I would have to do it within a window of like two days. If you zoom on my stuff, like there's so many little things happening with like the texture and my, I have like three sketches for every single comic. There's a lot of depth to them. I have to uphold the standard with everything I put out there. And so everything, even if it's like a, you know, like the crossover event, that was more of like a meta meme type of thing. I still had to meet my own standard to kind of fit in with the canon of who I am within the community. It's not so much that I'm like, oh, I, I have to make this nice. Otherwise, the community is going to criticize me. That's just my natural inclination. Like if I've got a punchline or something that's talking about art, it's like sometimes the joke is in the complexity of the art. I also kind of have this mission where the, the higher caliber stuff and the higher effort that I'm putting into my comics, like this is something I, I want to kind of rub off on my friends, you know? And I'm not, I'm not saying that it kind of comes off like I'm being like, I'm the best of the best when it comes to art. I'm trying to show other people that you will be rewarded for higher effort stuff, even if you don't post something every single day or every single week. I have the skill set to be able to produce things like this, and I'd say an equivalent is people like Adam Ellis. There's him and like Jenny Jinya. Super high caliber, high effort art is finally kind of reaching this point of being appreciated in this quote industry. It's something I want to see more of in web comics. It's just super high quality art just for like the sake of it because it's nice to look at. There's some people that use the art more as like a vehicle to get whatever their jokes across or their stories across. But for me, the visual narrative of everything, it's just as integral as the writing. It's more than a tool. I want to put beauty out there, you know? 
These two strangers with opposite styles was the perfect storm that Elk needed to skyrocket in popularity. Not only was she producing high quality comics online, but now there was this sort of community lore that Elk and Geese were these rivals going after each other. Things were going great online, these comics retained her style while being hilarious instead of scary. But in the real world, things were definitely getting scarier. The lighthearted feud was interrupted by a real life emergency, one that would affect Elk for months. Category 4 Hurricane Ida. Not even two full days after Portuguese Geese posted his final comic response in this initial feud, did Hurricane Ida make landfall in Louisiana. It was their second most damaging and intense hurricane on record behind Katrina in 2005. And Elk's home in New Orleans was right in the way. Whether you can see a natural disaster from your front porch, or you're evacuated a hundred miles away, nothing makes you feel more powerless than being at the mercy of Mother Nature. There was extreme damage across the entire state, and because of the hurricane, Elk disappeared for months. After exploding onto the scene like she did, nearly half a year passed without a word. And don't forget that all of this was happening on top of the lockdowns. If you want to talk about a time to be harboring a shit ton of fear, I don't even want to imagine. Halloween came and went, November turned into December, 2021 turned into 2022, and still nothing from Hollering Elk on the R Comic subreddit. But around mid-January of 2022, things started to change. She got back into the swing of things with yet another crossover, this time with the adorable Quest Sprout from Matthew J. Willis's web series Swords. The comic has Elk's character Vivian in her dragon form stalking Sprout as Elk's human avatar shouts that she doesn't do cute, and the gloves were off. Or, I guess back on, for an internet artist. Hollering Elk picked up the feud with Portuguese Geese, her next few comics dropped, and she hit her stride once again. Things were back to normal. Or, as normal as things can be in the world of Elk. Last year was kind of the year I, I officially transitioned from traditional painting for rich people to practically shitposting on the internet, and I'm happy. <laughs> And the claim that she doesn't do cute? Well, 2022 is certainly the year she leaned harder into the surreal horror humor. Comics like The Drain were certainly framing her like that. And despite going by the name Hollering Elk, she never really depicted herself as, well, an elk. October 2022 was the first time the Hollering Elk character reappeared since the Hornleg paintings, repurposed as an avatar. It's almost strange just how late this became a thing. I'm sure for a lot of people it felt like Hollering Elk as a hollering elk had been around for years, but I guess internet time works differently. And despite a hiatus, elk made the most of her time and things were going better than ever. Well, 2022 wasn't exactly perfect for elk. So it seemed like the year for hollering elk. She was growing, she was becoming established in the webcomics community. But with that growth comes consequences. Once you become a public figure, suddenly you need to watch everything you do. Every single comment, every single teeny tiny little interaction, even private messages and stuff. When you're at someone's level like like Ellen or Adam Ellis or whoever, when you're that high up, like you've got to tailor every single thing you say. I'm doing it now because like now I have to have this set persona and way of communicating like um places like reddit and it's going to be different between each platform because you kind of have to gauge what kind of audience you're you know communicating with it's a discussion that elk has had several times with fellow online comics creator pizza cake comic aka ellen woodbury who has faced more than her fair share of backlash the thing i, I tell her this all the time is like don't don't have your scandal. Everyone always has like just kind of a bizarre scandal along the way of building up their brand and their work and their content. Like just like something goes wrong and then it crashes down and you got to build back up from that point. And that, that's like one of my biggest fears. I'm like, man, I hope I don't put something in one of my comics or, or say something to someone online that just destroys me. It's like a, it's something I'm constantly vigilant about. Like it's taken years off my life. Lockdowns? Hurricanes? Those are nothing to Elk, not compared to the horrors of the internet. Every little thing is under a microscope. If I stop in the middle of a video and go, hey, you should subscribe and help me grow, because analytics have proven that if I wait to do that at the end of the video, everyone will have already clicked off, I'm still subjecting myself to people getting annoyed that I interrupted the video. And if people start piling on that criticism, then suddenly a minor infraction can turn into a whole thing. 
By the way, you should like and subscribe to help me grow. I'd say one of my first scandals was uh, I had this comic called The Airbnb, and it's about L.A. Costello walking into someone's Airbnb that they're having a party in. She threatens this girl in the bathroom about blocking her driveway. And the the big thing that kept popping up in the comment section, like everyone was like, where's the fucking driveway? There's no driveway in the beginning. And I did that on purpose because they couldn't understand that like the zoning going on in New Orleans is a dumpster fire. So the comic is drawn like that, but I understood people's they had a different position on that. It's like, well, you should have you should have put the driveway in the beginning and there should have been a car and so that we could go back and it's like, it all connects something, you know, it circles around. And I, I do agree with that aspect of it. But it turned into this awful debate that started spreading beyond the subreddit into like drama subreddits and stuff. And I wasn't trying to get into it with people, but they were fighting with me and they, they tore me apart for it. <laughs> like it just, it was a scandal. But that's an example of like Redditors just getting really, really hung up on this one thing and them wanting you to be better. They Most of them are like, I'm coming after you because I want you to improve and I have this opportunity to talk directly to the, to the creator of this media that I enjoy. You should have put a driveway in the beginning. And there you go. I can't tell you how many times I've seen content creators get crucified for not being able to take constructive criticism when what they're actually receiving isn't constructive at all. A good artist understands that they can always improve, and comments telling us that something isn't working helps us to develop. But that requires a level of nuance that the average user lacks. I love comments that are just so acutely savage, like just so mean, and I screenshot those and like I collect them because they crack me up because they're so mean. And I'm like, man, you don't even know me, and you know I'm gonna read this. But on the other end, you got these other people who just like adore the stuff that I do, and they write these big long things. The things I don't like, the things that bug me, it's like right kind of in the middle, where it's like someone who's sort of undecided as to whether or not they want to, they want to invest in my stories or my lore or whatever. Like they they see one offering from me, and you had a lot of folks that came in. They were just like, I do not get this. I'm like, that's okay. I don't like the folks who are just like. I don't get this, therefore it's trash because it doesn't appeal to me personally. That kind of plays into this, there's this trend going on of like this hyper individualism on the internet where people feel that if, they, if they're presented with a piece of content that is clearly wildly popular, but it doesn't appeal to them, then they feel compelled to inform the creator of this. This is trash because I don't like it and you should feel bad for making it. And it's weird, that's weird to me because I'm like, you know, it's like, why does this artwork or this comic or this video, then why does it have 20,000 upvotes? Like clearly somebody likes this. That's, I think that's what I'm getting at. I don't like absolute comments. I prefer people who want to have a discourse or, or people who are just there to unpack what it is I'm trying to do. For Elk, it's not about receiving criticism or the usual internet venom. That's just a normal Tuesday for her. It's the attitude that some people have where they expect everything to appeal to them. And if it doesn't, it's bad. And if it's popular, that really infuriates them. Like, listen, I don't like the Avatar movies for various reasons, but they're some of the highest grossing original movies ever. Does that mean the rest of the planet is wrong and I'm the only one with any sense? Should I go post about it in some drama subreddit? Of course not, it just means they're not made for me. But that's a concept that's beyond some people. Obviously, this scandal is pretty low ranking when compared to something like filming a corpse for a daily vlog, for example. And of course this little tiff between Elk and these commenters didn't destroy her career or anything. In fact, by 2023, she had even more going for her, especially when she announced her biggest project since she surfaced online all those years ago. There was a part in one of my previous videos where I named Elk as one of the big names in the webcomics community, at least on Reddit. And she said she's still always caught off guard when she's considered one of the big names. But when up-and-coming artists rise in popularity on the R Comics subreddit, they certainly learn who are the top dogs. Or Elks. Column's comics wasn't new, he'd been posting comics online since at least 2019, but his Pokemon parody series, The Previous Generation, had really been getting him attention. A collision with the big wigs was inevitable. The Elders was a crossover comic between Column, Pizza Cake, and Hollering Elk. While it might have started off as a more professional thing, this is where friendship started. 
Elk was firmly established, she made a name for herself in the community. It was finally time to drop what she had been working towards since she joined the world of online comics. It's called The Chosen One, and I'm gonna call it, it's my first foray into something that could conceivably be published. I'm using the entire comic to try out a ton of new techniques. Very experimental. It's the longest thing I've ever drawn. And you can tell right away that the depth of the rendering of everything is just on a whole new level. There's been some grumbling about it because I broke it up into parts, but it was really the only feasible way to continue producing something this dense and being able to make a living from it. But I'm also using it to see if I can prove to myself I can do a, a long form book type of thing. Hopefully people can kind of stick through it all the way through Halloween. It's gonna be wild. There was a very specific reason why this massive passion project took several years to drop. Elk could have led with this, but well, no one would have cared. It's a bit of a harsh truth, but when artists are at the mercy of the almighty algorithm gods, we need to put in the extra work. If we want any hope of our more niche projects succeeding at all, we need to already have a readership waiting. I've had people ask me, it's like, how have you made something so niche become so popular? And I, I've built this up since like that time that I was kind of tangling with Goose. And the thing I always warn people is when they're entering into webcomics, like I've only been at this just a little while. Like I'm still, I'm still a fledgling. There is so much more to this than just drawing the damn things. Like the caliber of my art is, it's almost irrelevant a lot of the time, you know? The kind of backlash I'll get for just the content of what's happening in, in my comics. Like it's, it's just a whole different world. The criticism that I get the most is that every single thing I put out is kind of a snapshot. And that's done by design, because if I had Ow! Yago! Shit! Cat. Uh, if I had started out trying to draw something of this scale at the beginning of last year, if I had spent that three or four months putting together the 17-page comic, if I tried to release that on Instagram and Reddit and Webtoon, it, it would have bombed. At that time, like, nobody really knew who I was, and I hadn't really built much of a following at that point. So... I've deliberately been kind of playing the game of like just being active and engaging and, and drawing quick stuff rather than just trying to churn out this monster thing and just expecting people to appreciate it. You've got to network and make those connections first. You got to you got to build people's interests uh, with like smaller, shorter offerings, and that that's how I've gotten to this point. Elk put in that work, whether it was feuding with Portuguese geese or building up a unique style that stands out. People showed up for the chosen one. Well, some of them showed up for very internet reasons. On both like on Reddit and on Facebook and Instagram, like everywhere it was, I got the, this very similar series of comments where people were like, they were looking at her and it's like, she's so, she's so fucking scary. And obviously like her face is melting, but she's still so hot somehow. <laughs> And it's like not on purpose. Like I like women. I'm I am a queer. I was thinking yesterday. I was like, I'm not trying to draw monster <laughs> content, but it's just naturally kind of happening that I'm drawing beautiful women who are also monsters. And so like the modifications that are happening on their faces, I think that's a lot of me just like putting my my love for this character into the design itself, and it's still coming through because like aesthetically, yes, her throat is hanging out, but it's such a lovely rosy color, you know. Yeah, some things never change, but change is part of life, and Elk is plenty aware of this when thinking about the future. The Chosen One is a massive project for her, but it's far from her last. While she doesn't plan on stepping away from webcomics anytime soon, she has her eyes set on graphic novels and more traditional publishing avenues. She also knows that her living situation isn't always going to be New Orleans, but New Orleans holds a special place in her heart, even if it's more like how a trash can holds a special place in a raccoon's heart. Every comic, I try to insert a panel called a love letter panel. So far, there's like the skyline, um, the, the Canal Street, Walgreens. Uh, hopefully that'll be a nice collection for people to get their hands on. Like how Stephen King sets all his novels in Maine, Elk sets all of her comics in New Orleans. And she plans to continue doing so even if she moves. Although if I were a gambler, I'd continue to bet on Elk filling her version of the city with a horrific centipede monsters. That's just her style. She'll make you cringe and break out laughing within the same panel. She'll make people hearts ache without deviating from her highly detailed artwork and grim sense of humor. And she plans to keep doing that for as long as she can. 
the day I feel like I'm forcing something on one of these comics is when I need to hang up my hat. Even during the hurricane hiatus, like I was miserable and growing more and more depressed because I just hadn't drawn a comic in like a couple months, you know? As chaotic and as depressing as life can be sometimes, like I still have this to come back to and I, I still love it just as much as the, the day I started scribbling on computer paper as a kid. You know, it's just like that's one part of myself that hasn't changed, it hasn't lifted, and I hope it remains that way for however long I keep on trucking. And that's Hollering Elk. If you want to follow her, she's pretty easy to find. She said she could use some more Instagram followers. And then just the other thing, it's like if y'all feel like helping me draw this massive comic, please join the Patreon. And if you want to follow me, I'm trying to be more active everywhere. But I'd love you forever if you subscribed and turned on the notification bell. Now, let's see. I did pizza cake. I did hollering elk. Who's going to be my next victim? 